We are back. I'm going to take it to Peanut Gallery. Peanut Gallery, take it away. All right, so we're going to talk about the skeleton, Laparca, or any of his other iterations, because there's are seemingly a million of them these days. But what I want to talk about is the religious and cultural significance of the skeleton within Mexican culture, which actually predates our current, the current Mexico that we know today. The skeleton within the culture of Mexico is particularly strong. And the Mexicans view the skeleton as not necessarily something of evil, like they do with death, but they celebrate it like they do with Dia de las Muertes, which is the Day of the Dead. So in Mexican culture, death is very widely celebrated and it is also a very animated so the the uh the skeleton within mexican culture is also very animated not only is it the representation of death but it indeed is a representation of both life and death and that connection between the two so, so if you look at the art of Mexico, there's a lot of skeleton motifs in it because it is the representation of that connection between life and death. Right. Think of the sugar skull. Exactly. So let's talk a little bit about La Parque or La Park, La Parca, whatever you want to call it. La Parca is literally a skeleton or he's not literally a skeleton, but he's literally a human dressed in all black besides bones as a skeleton. And what I, what I find most interesting is that La Parque, or the, the person who plays L.A. Park or La Parque, or whatever you want to call it, is, uh, was one of the first people to be signed to Lucha Libre Tripla A. Now, if you don't know if you don't know anything about the origin story of Lucha Libre Triple A, the reason that they spun off from CMLL, which was the original promotion, big Mexican wrestling promotion, was because of the lack of character. The they were very much traditional in their style of wrestling. So. When the individual who played the original L.A. Park or La Parca, you know, I'm just going to La Parca at this point. The person who played the original La Parca, when he came into the promotion, that's when he adopted the name and the characterization of that skeleton. And him being in that promotion, he was very lively. Um, you know, if you know enough about Lucha Libre... All of their characters are based off of motifs that are found in Mexican culture. Now, CMLL is not as receptive to the more outlandish sort of characters that you might find within La Parca. But La Parca is a product or is a result of what happens when a promotion, when a Mexican promotion... Um, becomes a little more animated. And the other thing I want to talk about too is that this is also a product of the culture at the time as well. Now, there aren't a lot of parallels because horror was not a big genre at the time. They didn't take inspiration from, from any American promotions at the time because the WWF was also very much about those more animated sort of characters. La Parca, as a skeleton character, was really the product of that culture itself, of the, the outlandishness, more or less, that Lucha Libre AAA was going for. And that was really their primary departure from CMLL. So, you take a character within the history of Mexico who is very animated, who kind of blurs that line between life and death, who, who is a motif and, and almost, I mean, literally the skeleton is a cultural icon within Mexican heritage. You turn that cultural icon into a living character and you see its result. You see its result being reflected 
not only in AAA, but even in CMLL, where you have a character who is very similar to La Parca. He's been translated into American culture as a representation of Mexican culture. There are so many people that have spun off of that original, and, and this is something that um, Tiger Hay might do in a future lesson where he talks about these Mexican spin-off characters. Right, I was actually thinking about doing a wrestling lesson about the whole controversy between um, Tripla A and the yes. original person who played La Parca. Right, and, and that because is, that, that's a whole can of that worms. Is, that is way beyond my wheelhouse. Right, but that is very much. But but you know again the reason for that is because this character at that point in time was so popular within Mexico that it literally was. Tripla A for the first seven or eight years of its existence. That was the the main guy. Right. So um, that's kind of what I have. Now, if you want to add a little bit more Tiger Height, I I mean, you know, we've yeah. we talked a little bit about the, the skeleton and Right. Well right now right now La Parca and El Hijo de La Parca, which is his kid. Now this is the second um, iteration of La Parca mm. because the original did pass away a couple of years yeah. ago because of um, that was that, a match. that was that really infamous where match yeah where he did a suicide dive yeah. and he became paralyzed he yeah. never came out of his coma right um so that like I said that's a whole other can of worms but here in America um La Parca has an edge right and even back then. Um, what La Parca is in Mexico, he's revered because right. what in in that culture, dressing up as the skeleton and the dancing and everything is actually part of a ceremony right. that they do for um, the Day of the Dead. Well, there is no ceremonial dance for Day of the Dead. However, the the dancing skeleton is a very is very much a part of the right. Day of the it's Dead. it's a show of respect to their ancestors exactly. mm -hmm. and the people who have died, um, because what Day of the Dead is is um, paying their tribute right. to them because it's very spiritual right. for that and culture. Remember, and remember, the reason that it is so significant in Mexico is because it actually predates. The modern day Mexico. There right. Are, there are whole paintings and and stories about dancing skeletons in Maya and Aztec culture. Right. And then you see, once again, this is very significant um, to the history of Mexico. Mm -hmm. And they did this to even ward off spirits of yes. um, certain dances. So um, with La Parca doing what he did, even in WCW, there were a lot of people who never really understood it. Um, obviously, yeah. I think I think now there is a much more of a deeper appreciation because of I I have to say that the internet age yeah. has really given us such a deeper understanding of what it really means for La Parca. Yeah. And obviously, if you've grown up in Mexico, if you were in Mexico one point in time, if you're, if you're Hispanic and came from Mexico, you still understand its cultural right. Or if you celebrate Day of the Dead in some way, shape, or form I as mean, a traditional area of the country which is very heavily Hispanic and, and Day of the Dead is a very important holiday here. Right, it really is. Yeah, yeah no, there are businesses that even like shut down because right. um, uh, the Day of the Dead is a um, holiday and they all, they all celebrate it and they recognize it as a holiday. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it's, it's so cool yeah. and there's so much to go into with La Parca. Um, I think we're actually pretty good on that. So, Peanut Gallery, do you have any ideas for what the next Bible study is? <sighs> I mean, well, there's, there's there's a lot. So there's, there's a lot to study, and I'm sorry about the lack of content with L.A. Park, but it's pretty obvious as to where that character came from. Mm -hmm. If you know, like about the culture of Mexico, you know how important the skeleton is to that culture, right? And even I well, a lot of us and do. actually, and even here in the United States, there are old cartoons of dancing skeletons. Well, um, spooky, they, spooky skeleton. Uh, 
that has a different connotation. Right. Well, well, the the Disney aspect of it, there was that. It was well, there was there was like a playfulness to I, what it. I, I know, I know what it is, you're, but you're once kind of going off on a tangent here, that has no. The connotation of the skeleton here in America is a lot different than it is in Mexico. Well, maybe back in the '30s, it was different than no. what it is now. Yep. Nope. Yep. You're no. such a. Well, you see, well, the problem is that peanut gallery is a liar. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> I'm just kidding. So anyway, so when we come back, we are going to be doing a wrestling lesson of a very obscure wrestler, but a wrestler that I think will really play itself out, and I recommend you actually look him up because uh, there's a lot of culture. And it's all going to be lies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we'll be back. <laughs> 